They are the world's most mysterious giants. But few people realize that African elephants are so much more than just a tourist attraction. An elephant's trunk has more than 40,000 muscles and is used for breathing, grasping, touching and making sounds that other elephants can hear from far away. An elephant's trunk can lift up to 350 kilograms and it's the only animal that can snorkel by holding its trunk above the water. But it is the trunk's incredible ability to smell that is now being documented at a facility near Bella Bella, north of Pretoria. They say an elephant's about 2,000 times better than a good dog. And a good dog is supposed to be 14 times better than a good human. So, I don't know. So let's do the calculation. An elephant's smell is 2,000 times better than a dog. And a dog's smell is 14 times better than a human's. 28,000 times? Indeed. So maybe it's not that far-fetched to predict that all these elephants could be trained to sniff people's luggage at our border posts, right? Funnily enough, not. It's, it's the same as your dogs. Not all dogs are going to be good sniffer dogs. Not all dogs are going to be good working dogs. So we've got five elephants here, and uh, we found that some are much better than others. Like Musina, she's immediately made a mental note of the name and scent of each of the tourists feeding her here. In your name? It's Mandy. Mandy, just feed your three times, please, Mandy. And then it's Stephanie's turn. Stephanie, are you listening? That's Stephanie. Okay. Stephanie and Mandy. She doesn't Minutes later, Musina is able to match Mandy and Stephanie's shoes. It takes us roughly two years, 16 months to two years, and it's pretty much based on the elephant's uh, time. You know, they, they have to want to work with us, and, uh, and we've got to try and encourage that. Ideally, you want them between the age of six and sort of, uh, I'd say, 16. If they're older than that, 18 years old and above, they're generally stuck in their ways. It's like adopting an 18-year-old son. It's hard to believe that these five elephants, Chishuru, Nwanedi, Shan, Chova and Musina were once considered problem elephants. They come from private game reserves and they were all due to be cult. So instead of the farmer, in fact the farmer was very anti-shooting his elephant and uh, so he tried to find out another plan and he fell on my dad. He had heard of what he had been doing and asked him to come and take them instead of shooting them. So that's when we got them and they came to us about 10 years ago. Sean's dad, the late Rory Hensman, was well known for his work with elephants. In fact, the Hensman children grew up with elephants and other orphaned animals in Zimbabwe. We actually got our first elise in 1988. My dad got them for us as kids to grow up learning about, but the intention wasn't to have them as pets. It was really just to release them into our backyard, which dad had set aside as a game farm. Uh, and unfortunately, when they came from the culling operations, they were too young to release, like we'd hoped. So dad put them into an enclosure, looked after them, and. Uh, within two weeks, reacting to their names, basic commands, and they're following a guy. So that was how it all kicked off. Um, we decided to look after them in that manner. And uh, as time went on, we got more and more. Rory's dream evolved over 26 years, from a passionate personal project to an opportunity for others to interact and learn about elephants. The Hensman family has taken Rory's work forward by establishing the Rory Hensman Elephant Research Unit to promote the elephant's wisdom to the world. The research will focus on ways to ensure that communities and wildlife coexist in harmony and on establishing a best practice for the management of elephants in captivity. It will also look at the elephant's anatomy and contraception. But the big one that we've been involved in has been the sense of smell of an elephant. Uh, very few people have uh, followed that path, and we've been lucky in that we can actually do it with our elephant. We decided to put them to the test. Catherine is a tourist from the UK, and we've taken her deep into the bush. She's pretending to have lost her way, and after walking around in the blistering sun for a while, she takes shelter under a tree. This is all make-believe, but the following part of the experiment is the real thing. Back at the office, Sean gives Catherine's jacket 
that was left behind to Chishuru to get her scent. And then try and follow, see. I think they think that she went in this direction. So smell, smell, smell. Look away, give it up, up, okay, follow, follow. Without even hesitating, the elephant starts tracking Catherine, his trunk scanning for her scent on the ground. Sean walks next to Chishuru, encouraging him all the way. And it's not long before the elephant finds her. But why does an elephant smell so well? I think that comes from when they were possibly uh, mammoths and they had to find food under the thick, thick ice and, uh, and snow. So they had that and they've got that huge ability from back then and they've carried that into today. Um, I think they find their food and, and find water underground using their sense of smell, all those sorts of things that they need to survive. So they've really had to make sure that that is acute enough for them to live the extended periods that they do. Money for the research and training has come from an unexpected place. We're working very closely with the US Army Research Office and um, they've been very supportive of us for the last three years and uh, we're finalizing the research uh, paper which should be published this year. These buckets contain small pieces of litmus paper with different scents. With these pieces of paper we can impregnate different uh, scents onto that and then get the elephant to learn to ignore all other scents bar the one that he's been trying to find. In this case, it's explosives. Fine. There are only traces of TNT on the litmus paper that are stuck in one of the buckets. Look at how Chishuru walks past the first bucket and then identifies the second one. Good boy, By saluting, well he tells Sean that he has located the TNT. While the elephant's sense of smell is innate, Sean and his team have taught them to communicate with them. We started initially by just introducing uh, the elephant to the scent of TNT and, um, and only rewarding them when they saluted, when they smelt it. So it was a very simple process. He has TNT, smell, salute. Good boy gives his reward. And we just kept on repeating that until eventually we would offer the TNT, he'd smell it, he'd salute, and then we'd give him the reward. One way of rewarding the elephant is a click sound. A click is a very simple reward. Um, it's basically giving the animal 10 rand, 10 rand, whereas a well done can be well done, or it can be well done. And there's are two different values of reward. So we use the well done when he's done something really well and he's really out, uh, performed well, and the, and the food reward, whereas this just lets him know that's what we want, that's what we're looking for, that's it. This form of training is known as classical conditioning. An animal learns to associate an event, in this case the reward, that comes immediately after another event. Here it's saluting. The Russian scientist Ivan Pavlov was the man behind the theory of classical conditioning. He won the Nobel Prize in 1904. The bucket with the TNT is now in a different spot. And here comes the trunk, and the salute, and the reward. But how do they plan to use this in practice? Our idea is never to take an elephant to a landmine field or something like that, but our idea is to learn as much as we can about how they smell, why they smell is so much better than a dog's or something like that, and also to possibly bring the smell from the airport or from the landmine field to the elephants. There are also other practical uses that Sean envisages for the elephants. Maybe finding diseases. I'm very, very keen on getting an elephant to find cancer. And if they are so intelligent and their sense of smell is so cute, maybe we can say, get you to have an elephant scan and say, actually, you have lung cancer or you've got pancreatic cancer and get the elephant to indicate that. The sort of uh, applications are quite endless. We could use them for search and rescue, uh, you know, tracking poachers. You can go on and on. Sean and his team have been invited to present some of their findings at the Elephant Foundations Conference in Sri Lanka later this year, an opportunity he hopes to use in order to share with others the outcome of years of hard work by man and elephant alike. <laughs>